Hi guys, it's Kate from The Incredible K9. Today I wanted to talk about prong collars. I want to talk about why we use them, which ones to buy, and how to fit them properly to your dog. Assume a dog has only ever been on a flat buckle collar, like the standard nylon web fabric flat buckle collar for years. And the handler has difficulty walking their dog. The handler has difficulty communicating with their dog through collar and leash communication. So we need to level the playing field. If this dog is completely willing and comfortable to tune out their handler and drag them down the street, then we need a more effective tool to communicate with the dog. And that may very well be a prong collar. So by using a prong collar, we're actually reducing the amount of force required in order to physically communicate with the dog through the leash and the collar communication, as well as reducing stress and reducing anxiety on both the behalf of the handler and on behalf of the dog. So I only use two sizes of the Herm Springer brand prong collars. I use the Herm Springer brand. Uh, here would be kind of their logo. It says Springer on the top, Herm Springer. So that's the only brand I recommend. I just like the way the mechanics, the way that they work, as well as the tips of the prong collar are rounded. If you were to get a prong collar from Petco, they don't round their tips, so it's like a blunt cut tip, uh, which is just not as comfortable. So I don't, I don't recommend those. So with the, the Herm Springer prong collar, we have two sizes. This is the 3.0 millimeter medium weight, and this is the 2.25 lightweight. Even if you have a large dog, like a 150 pound Mastiff, you're probably only going to need the medium weight. The bigger weight that you go with the prong collars, these links get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you end up having less links on the collar, and it's more effective to have more links on the collar. So the company also sells extra links. So like here's an extra link, it comes in a box. This one came with uh, three of them, three of them in the box. You can also order just one link at a time, kind of depends where you order it from. So this little bag came with one link. If you get the medium weight uh, prong collar, you probably won't need extra links unless you have a huge dog. So my 80 and 90 pound dogs, if I use a medium weight on them, I'm actually taking out links. And if I use the lightweight 2.25 on my personal dogs, which are 80 and 90 pounds, I have to add links, which is fine. You just need to buy extra links. So that's when you would purchase an extra link. For reference, um, let's see, my 90 pound Rottweiler has a 21 inch neck circumference and I think I needed three extra links for her collar. It was, it was two, if not three, extra links. So that would just be a good reference. Um, you can see that the, this is the lightweight. You can see that the lightweight is just smaller. So it takes up less real estate on a dog's neck. So it's just not quite as noticeable or as clunky. But if you have a big dog that's dragging you down the street, eventually I would use the lightweight 2.25 on them. But if they're really pulling on you and, and we need to communicate safely with them, then I would go with the 3.0 medium weight to start because the links are just, they're stronger. It's a, it's a thicker metal and the mechanics work a little bit better. So let's talk about uh, how to put on and take off the prong collar. It should never ever slip over the dog's head. It should actually be really snug on the dog's neck and fit high up by their ears, which I'll demo in a little bit. But if you have a prong collar and you need to take out links, then what I do, let me try and show you, is I start to work the link up, so you can see it there, I, I, I work it up, and then put my thumb and my pointer finger, 
on the link and squeeze it till it pops out. So to put it back in, I put one side of the link in the hole, squeeze the other prong together, and slide it back in. So you actually have to like unhook the link from another link in order to open it up. So I'll try and show that to you again here. I work it out a little bit, I squeeze to take it apart, to put it back together. I put one side in, so here's the, the link. I put one side in and then squeeze the other side until it fits. So the collar has the center plate and then the links are on either side and then we have the, the chain here at the end. Uh, this collar is just one link off from being symmetrical, which is fine. So they might not be even on both sides, you just want them to be close to being even. You wouldn't want uh, like one side of the collar to only have four links and the other side have seven links. Try and make it as even as possible on either side of that center plate. Looking at the chain here, we have two rings. We have the round, perfectly round dead ring. And then we have this like D-shaped swivel ring. So this one swivels. This is the one that you want to connect your leash to. This other one, which will sit closer to the dog's neck, you do not connect the leash to. So I'm here with Yahtzee, my Rottweiler. She's going to help me demo how to fit the collar. So this is the medium weight 3.0 millimeter and I have all the links on it that it came with. So to test out the fit, we unhook it, we put it around her neck, we rehook it, and we need to determine how loose it is. So this, you can see it slides pretty easily all around her neck. I can just spin it and spin it and spin it, which means it's too loose. So I wanna unhook it again and take out a link. If it's way too loose, then right from the beginning, you might know that you'll need to take out two links. So you could take out one link from either side of that center plate, but I'm just going to try one link for her. So we take out one link, set it aside, put it back on. So now it doesn't spin as easily and to fit my hand underneath it, it's just a little bit more snug, which is perfect. So I'm gonna stay with this size. We'll also wanna position it up close to her head. So if throughout your training session, the collar slides down on their neck, it'll just be more effective if you scooch it back up. So to do that, you might need to, to kind of hold their skin as you scooch it. And then you'll also want the chain to be right at the back of her head. So we'll want the leash to be attached up high, like not down here under their chin, but on their back of the neck. So we just reposition it so that chain's back here, and then you attach your leash to the little swivel hook. Thanks, Yetsi. First get a prong collar, I don't like to connect a leash to it right away. So for the first day, second day, third day, just let the dog wear the collar and get used to the sensation, just the feel of it without connecting to it just yet. So as long as you're home and you can supervise or the dogs lounging around in the kitchen or in the living room, just let them wear it, but definitely take it off when they go back in their crate because we wouldn't want a link from the collar to get stuck on the metal wire from a crate. 
So to introduce our dog to the prong collar and to the pressure, we're going to do what's called a prong collar dance. So I'll demonstrate it with Yahtzee. You'll move with your dog and allow them to get out in front of you. And then apply pressure backward. So you're moving forward with your dog, they move out in front of you, you apply pressure back, they yield, and then you relax your hand. So apply pressure, as soon as they give in, you give in. So don't hold constant pressure. Let them move out in front of you, apply pressure. As soon as they give in to the pressure, you give in to the pressure. So don't hold constant tension. Good girl. So she's already yielding to the pressure. Good girl. We're teaching her how to turn off the pressure. Good girl. One little safety tip I have for you that I've never had an issue with, but I've heard this happening before, which is when a prong collar link fails and you have a loose dog. So we would attach the leash to the swivel ring, like I talked about earlier, and then you'd use a carabiner. This is a carabiner. You would attach a carabiner to your flat buckle collar and then attach the other side to that perfectly round link in your prong collar. So we have a leash attached to the swivel ring and then the carabiner attaches to that round link as well as your flat buckle collar. So that if, if for any reason the prong collar comes loose, which has never happened to me, but just in case it were to come loose, you're still connected to your dog. After you've properly fit the prong collar to your dog, they've worn it around the house a few days, and then you did that little prong collar dance that I just demonstrated with Yahtzee, then you're free to continue using the prong collar with your training. Have a good day. Actually, have an incredible day. Bye.